Hello everyone and welcome back to The Coach's Box presented by Monster Hydro. I'm your host, Rich Lamborn, and this is episode two. Uh, first of all, I wanna thank everyone for tuning into episode one, sending in your comments, your feedback, your questions. It really helps us give you uh, as good of a product as we can give you. Obviously, it gives us some, uh, some funny things to think about as well. There was a lot of issues with me not wearing a sleeveless shirt, for which I apologize, but my producer seems to think that sleeves are more professional. Uh, also, one of the guys on Facebook wasn't necessarily too pleased with what I had to say, but did mention that he thought I was an adequate hitter in college, which really felt good. Uh, so we will look forward to getting all your comments in the future, and we'll see what we can answer for you this week coming up. It's been a couple weeks since our first episode. A lot's been going on in the world, of course, uh, but we appreciate you sending in all the feedback, all your questions, all your comments. Please continue to do so. We want to make it fun. We want to make it interactive. If you got heckles for me, that's great. If you want to say I look like Jake Gyllenhaal and Jarhead, but only much less handsome, that's fine. All that kind of stuff is wonderful. Let's see what slid into the DMs this week. Question number one, let's see what we got here. Hey coach. My name is Jordan. I had a quick question for you. Is there a right or wrong way to approach the net when I'm hitting? I uh, would love to find out. Thank you. Jordan on the move. I love it. The walk and talk. Thank you for that question, Jordan. Is there a proper way to approach the net when you're hitting? I would say yes and no. Everyone's going to have their own kind of method that they like that feels comfortable for them, but there are some elements to the approach that we want to keep consistent. If you're a right-handed player, you want to be able to get yourself in a position where that ball is always on your hitting shoulder so that you're kind of reaching the max of your ability and you're not sort of leaning and compromising uh, your physicality. With the great foresight that we had, kind of we were in tune with you, Jordan. We, we filmed a little bit of stuff. Uh, and by we, I mean myself, Jake and Taylor. We're fortunate enough to take a trip up to Utah recently. And we got a little bit of footage of Taylor showing us what a good, solid approach should look like. So let's go into some of those clips here. This is Taylor from the left side. And what we're gonna notice is he's gonna pass the ball and get out wide towards the sideline. We're gonna disregard whoever's setting here. And you can see that he kinda goes slow to fast, which is important, so he can accelerate into the ball. And then boom, that ball's on his hitting shoulder the whole time. As a right-handed player, if you're on the left side, you want to get that width so that you're approaching dynamically. You're able to be physical. You're able to keep that ball on your hitting shoulder so that you've got range and you've got a little bit of vision. Uh, if you're a right-handed player on the right side, there are a couple of different options. Uh, the first of which is passing and kind of getting inside. So you go from inside to out. Again, trying to keep that ball on your hitting shoulder. Uh, let's see, Taylor can show us what that looks like here. So you can see he kind of slides in a couple steps, steps out to that set as it gets pushed. Little hop inside, gathers himself, and then really nice slow to fast kind of explosion out to his right. Boom. Well done, Taylor. Uh, so again, the principle is that we're trying to keep that ball on our hitting shoulder uh, and also kind of keeping everything in front of us so we've got that vision and we've got that range. Okay, another option, Taylor's going to show us this, but this is kind of the option employed by his partner, Jake Gibb, a lot, which is we're going to pass and kind of slide to the outside and come up and down the line. Let's see what that looks like. So he passes the ball, kind of slides out straight down the line. Again, he keeps that ball on his right arm, though. A little hop, gather, and a nice step close to that ball. Another look at it, drone style. There you go. And you can see he kind of gave us a line shot. He gave us an angle swing. That route is a little bit more dicey in the sense that you've got to have a partner that you can rely on to set you the ball out wide like that. If your partner's a little more comfortable with kind of that up and down set and you're on the right side, that first route might be better for you. 
where you slide in and so you can kind of step out if things get wide. Uh, the potential downfall of the, the wide approach on the right side is if the set is too short, you end up leaning in and uh, it's a little bit more difficult to deal with. Hopefully that answered your question. A couple different options for you there, but you can see that there's no one proper way to do it necessarily. You just have to get some of those technical aspects consistent and then find what feels comfortable for you. Okay, question number two. Let's see what we got here. Hey Coach Rich, I'm Caleb Scott from Eugene, Oregon. I've been playing beach volleyball for two to three years now and I coach for Webfoot Juniors Volleyball. And a question I had for you was, when attacking the ball, how long to leave your guide arm up on your follow through? So just a question I had for you and want to see what your uh, input was on that and any ideas, thanks. Uh, Caleb, excellent question. How long to leave your guide arm up? I like the uh, Will Ferrell, I, I don't know exactly what to do with my hands posture. I'm the same way, buddy. I, as you can tell from this coach's box episode, I have absolutely no idea what to do when I'm in front of a camera. So let's uh, get into the answer of your question. Again, I've, I'm going to employ my boy uh, T. Krabs here because he's a great uh, study in what to do with my arms when approaching uh, to attack a volleyball. We'll look at picture number one here. He gets a really good double arm lift, okay, which means he's going to swing his arms all the way back here to help kind of spring him off the ground. Okay, the longer our range of motion, kind of the more force we can generate and hopefully the more lift we can get. Okay, it's an important part of the process. It's kind of the beginning. You can see Taylor's got a pretty uh, special double arm lift here. If I tried to do that with my shoulders, I think I would tear both of my arms off. Uh, this is kind of another look at, he's already begun to drag his arm down. Uh, Caleb, we'll just kind of quickly scroll through these these pictures here. Uh, that's, that's another look at kind of what he's doing up at the top. Um, but you can see, here's, here's a look at serving. So he's helping load that shoulder by lifting that arm up. I would say, again, kind of like uh, in the first question, there's not a 100% right answer, but there are some technical elements that we want to be able to hit along the way. That good lift that starts back here, we want to throw ourselves up and then we need to keep that arm up as long as possible, but it, that's what really starts our arm swing and helps us torque through the ball. So once, once we start that process, that's kind of the answer to how long that arm needs to be up there. However, however long I can leave it up before I need to start the process of swinging at the ball, if that makes sense. Caleb, thank you for that question, buddy. Thank you for coaching volleyball out there and spreading the uh, sport to the younger generation. Appreciate you. All right, let's go to our next question here. Hi, my name is Tim Weber. I'm from Roseburg, Oregon. I have a question about blocking. So I know in indoor you can catch and direct, but in sand you need a clean contact. So I was wondering if on an overpass in sand, you have to have a clean contact or if you can open up and direct. Thank you. Tim, first of all, I love the mustache. I don't know if that's a quarantine thing or if that's just your regular style, but either way, it's fantastic. Uh, that's an excellent question, and I think it's a somewhat recent rule update, uh, but the indoor and the outdoor rules are, are very similar when it comes to blocking and redirection. Uh, on the beach, anytime you're in the blocking posture, anytime the ball's coming from the other side of the net, you can redirect it. In fact, there's a great clip uh, that we'll put up for you from our good friend Alexander Samoylovs from Latvia, the Lion King, if you know him as such doing kind of an extreme example of what you're talking about here, Tim. He almost throws the ball to the deep corner jumbo style in this clip, and that is a completely legal play since he was blocking. Uh, it's kind of an outlier. All the other contacts in beach have to be clean, have to be either you know a closed hand or hands together or something like that. But in that one particular instance, like you're talking about, when you're at the net, you are allowed to redirect. Hope that answers your question, brother, and great mustache. That concludes episode two. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you to Monster for being our sponsor. Uh, thank you to Caleb, Jordan, and Tim for sending in their questions. Thank you to Taylor for being our model for all the answers. Uh, a special thanks goes out to Jared and Renee Starling uh, in Farmington, Utah, who hosted us while we were up there. They uh, had the beautiful indoor court uh, at which we filmed Taylor's clips there. 
Uh, it was a wonderful time and we appreciate their hospitality. Uh, as always, continue to send in your questions, anything you'd like to know about the game, even the lighter side of the sport. Where's the best place to travel? Who's got the best personality on tour, Martins, Plavins? Uh, all that kind of stuff we'd love to answer for you. Uh, and we'd want it to be communicative and we want it to be fun. So please continue to send your comments and your feedback. Thank you so much and we'll see you next time.